I saw this poster the other day. Many people who plan to meet God at the 11th hour die at 10.30. And it made me raise an eyebrow, smile a little. What's it saying? Well, many people say, oh, well, I'm going to live my life. But before I die, just in case there's a God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, somehow click my fingers at the 11th hour and say everything I've denied I, I now believe in you know something like that and what the, the poster is saying is that well you know too many people who plan to do that they die before the opportunity comes along you know because let's face it very few of us know when we're going to die what does the scripture say about it? I'm just going to turn to my Bible. If you want to read along, uh, you may, if you have a Bible or you want to put it into the Google. And it's Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 16 and verse 19. So that's Luke chapter 16, verse 19, and on to the end of the chapter at verse 31. And it's about the rich man and Lazarus. OK, now the rich man denied God. Lazarus was a poor beggar who accepted God. Here's how the story goes. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, well dressed and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Abraham in heaven. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, which is another word for hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus, of course, was the, the beggar full of sores. Then the rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And here's the important bit. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then the rich man said, I beg you, therefore, father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But Abraham said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. So what does this passage of scripture tell us? Luke's, Luke's gospel, chapter 16 and from verse 19. What it's saying is that you live your life on earth and then you die. And once you die, it's too late to accept God. Some will be in heaven. It's very simplistic, isn't it? In Abraham's bosom, 
some will be in the tormenting fire of Hades or hell. And there's a gulf fixed so that nobody can pass from heaven to hell. Nobody can pass from hell to heaven. And then he goes on, uh, the rich man goes on to say, well, send Lazarus, this, you know, that he may go from the dead and tell my brothers. And Abraham is saying, no, you know, People have told you the truth while you were living on earth. Uh, people have told your brothers the truth while they were living on earth. If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they aren't going to listen to anybody. And I suppose, taking that to this present context, I could say, my friend, if you ain't going to listen to me while you live, you aren't going to listen, though somebody should rise from the dead and tell you the truth either. That's exactly what the scripture is saying. We need to make a decision for salvation. We need to make a decision to repent from our sins while we're here on earth. Because one day we breathe our last. The spirit lives on. Do you want your spirit to live on for eternity in the presence of God, which is heaven? Or do you want your spirit to live on for eternity, separated from God, which is hell, the torment of hell, separated from God? Well, I made my choice when I was 36 years old. That was about 30 odd years ago, 34, 35 years ago. I heard the good news preached at a meeting of the full gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International wasn't even in a church. I realised I was a sinner. I realised I needed a saviour. I understood that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, free from sin, not fathered by, there's the telephone, not fathered by a man like you and I were, and therefore born into the sin of Adam, but fathered by the Holy Spirit and, and free from sin. But what about you? Are you able to acknowledge that you're less than perfect? That you need a saviour? That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the saviour of the world? and invite him into your life. If you would, I'm going to pray just a short prayer of repentance and of accepting Jesus as saviour, because it needs to be done here on earth. Once we breathe our last, it's too late. Here's the, a prayer. Father God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, that I'm less than perfect. I repent, I turn away from living my life my own way. And I invite Jesus Christ, your son, into my heart and into my life to be my saviour and to be my Lord. Help me, Father, to live life your way with Jesus as my guide and my saviour. I ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And if you are able to pray that prayer with me for the first time, know this. God has heard your prayer. He has forgiven your sins. And Jesus has come into your heart and into your life to be your saviour. If you prayed that prayer with me today, let me know or let somebody you know, love and trust in your local church know that they can get alongside you and uh, encourage you in the way of the Christian, in the way of the scriptures, in the way that Jesus would have us to live our lives. And please don't wait until the 11th hour because 10.30 comes before 11 o'clock and too many people never make it to the 11th hour. 
The Lord bless you.